Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshal. Today, I want to talk about a little something that's become an issue because of the coronavirus uh, stimulus bill that's up for a vote in the House right now. Actually, it's passed the House, and it's in the Senate now. Well, one of the things that Mitch McConnell is doing to try to kill the $2,000 checks to citizens, which is not the topic of this video, is he wants to add on something to it that would also repeal Section 230. Now, a lot of you out there probably don't know what Section 230 is, so first let's go over it. Section 230, in a nutshell, basically says that if you are an internet-based uh, company, if you're something like Facebook or Instagram, etc., that you are not legally liable if a third party posts something on your site. You are not a publisher, you are just a bulletin board. And since you can't control who comes by and, you know, thumbtacks something on your bulletin board, you shouldn't be responsible for that because you're not editing the content. Which is why so many of us in the gun community get mad when they do censor and when they do edit content because they're given protections by, uh, from the law, protections from the, by the government, so that they are not responsible. So they can't use that, oh, well, we don't want stuff getting out there that causes harm and then us be responsible. They can't use that argument because they are absolved of all liability because of Section 230. And that is why we say you should not be censoring us because you are not supposed to be acting as uh, an editor or a publisher. When you choose what goes out and what doesn't, you're editing, you're publishing. So 230 should not apply to you if you're doing that. Now, even though we say that, we don't want 230 to go away. We want them to abide by the rules of 230, what they have to do to be protected under 230. And unfortunately, Mitch McConnell is attaching to the $2,000 check bill uh, a provision that would repeal 230. And we don't want that happening as a gun community. Now, you might say, well, why do we not want the, 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 the uh, internet companies protected? Why do we want them to have this special protection? Well, we want them to have this protection because if it goes away, and they say, okay, well, now we are going to be responsible for what goes on there. Gun channels will be gone in a day. They will just delete all of us. Because they won't want to take any chance that there's a mass shooting tomorrow and any gun channel said anything inappropriate, or at least inappropriate in their minds, bet between the time uh, that this bill was, this uh, provision was repealed and the time there's a shooting. Anytime that they're responsible, they're going to get rid of all gun channels and anything that they consider at least bit offensive, inflammatory, any conspiracy theory sites, poof, gone. Gun sites, like I said, poof, gone. Probably a lot of sites that say anything about the government, poof, gone. Because if they're going to start bearing full responsibility, they're going to wipe the slate clean. It's going to be basically fail videos, you know, people getting hit in the nuts, and kit, uh, cat videos, which is 90% of the internet now. So they'll wipe out the other 10% of us easily. And they'll keep us gone as long as they're liable for the content we push. Because I hate to say it, there's a lot of gun channels out there that say some crazy shit sometimes. And... YouTube's not going to be willing to be associated with that or held responsible for that. They're not going to want to let someone talk about a boogaloo. They're going to be like, no, that could be considered sedition, and we're not going to be involved in that. So delete, 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 delete. All those accounts are going to be deleted. So we don't want 230 to go away. Mitch McConnell knows that. He knows no one on the right or the left really wants 230 to go away. We just want the internet providers to abide by the conditions of 230. We want them to act in a way that uh, justifies 230 protecting them. Because if 230 goes away, we will be wiped away. Pretty much, pretty, I can think of, I can't hardly think of any far right centered ch uh, uh, channels that wouldn't disappear. And Mitch McConnell knows that, so he's just trying to poison because they don't want to give $2,000 to every individual, which is a different topic, which I'm not talking about right now. So he's trying to poison it with this repeal of Section 230. That is uh, a bad thing. We do not want that to happen. Don't let yourself be fooled into thinking that is something you do want to be happening just because you're mad at, like I said, internet companies. Because if they're told tomorrow that, hey, you're responsible for everything on your site, 
well, now they are publishers, they are uh, uh, editors, they will have to go through and edit. And they'll be more free to say, hey, we're a private business and we're responsible for everything on our channel, so we're going to be very controlling about what we allow on there. You're going to see a lot of stuff disappear. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all of it. A lot of far-right stuff or even just right-of-center stuff would be the first stuff that disappeared. So be careful what you wish for. We do not want 230 going away. We just want, like I said, the internet companies to act in a way that 230 is justified. We in no way want to delete it because if it goes away, so do we. All right, with that being said, I want to move on to gun talk, and today I want to make it about accessories. Now, the reason I want to make it about accessories today is because I want to talk about something very specific. You know, when we talk about carrying, you always hear, what gun are you going to carry? What holster are you going to carry? How many mags, etc." But one topic that often gets neglected is gun belts. What belt are you going to use? Because you can buy the best holster in the world. If you put it on a cheap $3 belt, it's going to be a shitty holster as far as how it performs. You need a good belt. The belt is the foundation of your carry rig. Just like the foundation of your home is so important. If the foundation is bad, the whole house is bad. Same thing with your carry rig. If you don't have a good belt, you don't have a good carry rig. Now, people ask me all the time, well, what do you use? Well, you know, you've seen lots of pictures of me carrying. You see me carrying different guns with different holsters. You know, my favorite 1791 production holsters, my favorite custom holster, Lobo holsters. You always see different holsters and sometimes different guns when you see pictures of me carrying something new, you know, to test it out. But one thing that's a constant in all these pictures is the belt. The belt I always wear is a core track line belt. It's from Core Essentials and it's called a track line belt. Now there's all kinds of belts out there you can buy. There's good leather belts, nylon belts, etc. But I kind of shy away from all leather belts, even if they're top quality. I've bought some top quality leather belts. I have leather belts I've paid $150 for and they wear out over time. Even if they're reinforced where the holster is, that's where they usually wear out. They usually start to sag and bend where the holster is. But even if they're reinforced there, then they start to stretch out around the holes. You know, the little holes that the piece goes through to hold them in place. The sizing holes. So I kind of stay away from leather. Uh, I don't mind a leather looking holster, but I would rather it be reinforced all the way through if it's going to be reinforced. Not just where the belt is. Uh, you know, not just where the holster is on the belt. I want it reinforced from end to end. I want another layer sewn in there. And that's why I go with track line because you can get them in nylon and you can get them in leather and you can get them in different colors, but all of them have that reinforcing back sewn on all the way through. So they're very strong. They don't really tend to sag or to distort or anything like that. And another thing great about the track line belts, other than the fact that they're available in different materials and different colors, is that they fit better. With most belts, especially leather belts, you have a hole like every inch. You have like between five and eight holes every inch. So it's not really that versatile as far as the fit. With the track line belts, they have the little notch system on there, a little kind of a ratchet system that gives you 40 different positions uh, with one quarter inch increments. If you look at the belt here, as you see, it just clicks. And then when you want to release it, you just push the little latch on the top and you release it. It's real easy to tighten real easy to loosen. The belt itself is, like I said, very sturdy. If you ask me how long they'll last, well, I can't say exactly because I've had the same belt for a while now. Now, I've got a couple of them I wear occasionally. They all look like brand new, but I have another one that I wear almost every day. I just replaced the belt a week ago after about three years, and the belt was still usable. The belt was something I still could have worn every day, but it was starting to get a little bit of a bend in it where it went through the holster because I'd been carrying it with a holster that required a lot of snaking through. So I said, well, now that I've got a holster that doesn't require that, I'll replace the belt. So I got about three years out of the one I wear almost every day, and it's still in fairly decent shape, still usable. I just chose to upgrade it. So they seem to last a very long time. I have got, I can't say anything bad about how long they last because it cost me about 60 bucks and it lasted me three years. 
and could still last me longer if I wanted it to. And here's the good thing about these belts too. They're totally adjustable. So even if the belt wears out, I can keep the buckle and just get another belt part. They come in a length uh, that's way larger than most people need. I don't remember the exact length it comes in now, but it's in like the 40 something inch range. And then you just cut it down to what size you need stick it onto the buckle. It's got a couple little screws. It's got a little uh, alligator tooth thing that holds it in place very snugly. So you can adjust that belt when you first get it to the perfect size for you and then just not worry about it again until you need a new belt, do the same thing over again. So the track line belts are just awesome. And nowadays, uh, one thing I hadn't even been aware of till I looked today is they come in a lot of different buckles now. They got a lot of Western style buckles, they call them. And uh, that cowboy buckle, paired with the leather belt, that looks awesome. I wanna get one of those now. <laughs> in fact, I want several of these buckles. So these belts aren't only sturdy and rugged and versatile. They can be dress belts or duty belts. They're just all around good looking belts with a lot of different accessories, buckle accessories, different uh, variable lengths available in them. So they're very nice belts. Uh, just to me, the best carry belt I've ever found. It's the one I wear every day. Like, you, like I say, in every picture you'll see that belt. Now, the only uh, thing I've had people say before in the past that I had to agree with that was bad is they were only available in 1.5 inch. But the reason I'm talking about them today is because I got a new one recently and it's a 1.75 inch belt. They've started making garrison size belts. Uh, the buckles are more limited for the garrison size belts right now, but still the one I use is just a plain old black buckle. That's my favorite one. So if you want that one and three quarter inch belt size to give you that far more stable hold on that holster, now you can get it. Before, if I wanted that, I had to go to a different uh, belt maker because they didn't have it, but now they have it. So since they now offer that, the garrison size uh, belt, along with every other thing they've already done like super uh, strong uh, good looking versatile you know really adjustable and now available in garrison size also that's what I recommend to everyone who carries a gun you can carry whatever gun belt you want spend as much as you want but I can tell you right now in my opinion for like 60 bucks you can get the best one out there that I think you'll love and it'll last you for years that's the core essentials track line belt in my opinion like I said they are the best carry belt on the market. All right, I wanna end the show today with our EDC, our viewer EDC of the day. And today's carrier is Randy from Oregon. And as you can see, he's carrying his P365 with an extra magazine in a holster he said he found used at his gun dealer. So there's always a good thing to do right there. Look for used holsters. Used holsters work fine, especially these Kydex ones like the one he has here. Now, one thing I would say is make up your mind over the belt or under the belt for the little uh, clips there. But other than that, this looks like a nice setup. He's even got him a knife and a flashlight here. Randy looks like he's ready to go. He looks like he's ready for the zombie apocalypse or something here. Well, other than the fact that he's liable to shoot his dick off the first time he ever has to draw his gun or reholster it, but I'm ignoring that right now because, you know, uh, there's, there's a lot of controversy to appendix carry. I don't agree with it, but if you want to make yourself a eunuch, go right ahead. But I'm going to have to say one thing about Randy here. Even if he doesn't blow his own dick off the first time a zombie spooks him, he's still not going to survive the apocalypse because, as you can see in this picture, Randy drinks his uh, soda from a can with a straw. The first people who are going to die in the zombie apocalypse are the kind of people that drink soda from a can with a straw. So regardless of what he carries, I'm going to give him a, a pass on how he's carrying because it looks like there's probably no hope for Randy anyway. But I did want to show him today, show everyone how he's carrying, what he's carrying, because he is the viewer EDC of the day. It's Randy from Oregon with his P365 in an inside waistband holster. All right, there's another show in the bag. I hope you all enjoyed it. And I hope you come back tomorrow. Until then, I just want to remind everyone that this channel is 100% viewer funded. Don't take money from special interest groups. Don't take money from advertising groups. Don't take money from product manufacturers. Don't take sponsorship from gun shops or anybody else. This channel is, like I said, 100% viewer funded. The money you put into this channel goes to fund the projects that this channel believes in and runs. And those are projects like the TYM Triple P. If you're more interested in what the TYM Triple P is, please go over to TYMPPistolProject.com. Check it out. And the Pets and Vets programs, etc. We want to 
help veterans, we want to help pets, and we want to put firearms into the hands of people who want to exercise their Second Amendment rights but can't afford to. So go over to the website, check everything out. If you like it, become a sponsor. Go over to patreon.com forward slash the Yankee Marshall and sign up to be a member of the Posse. And with that said, I just want to sign off today by saying, as far as the state of the world is concerned out there right now, you know, things are what they are. It is what it is. But if we work together and we keep a level head and we ignore the fear mongers and the propagandists and we act like adults and we fight for our rights in a smart way, we will win. And in the future, what things will be is far better. <laughs>